Hello, friends. Welcome back to The Big Show. My name is Jimmy Smith, the host of the podcast. And The Big Show is where we talk about modern day issues like men's health, masculinity, the hard truth about dating, and overall life advice to help make your guys' life just a little bit easier. Today, we're going to talk to you about your heart. And no, I don't mean the literal one in your chest. What I'm referring to is the one that you offer up whenever you're out there on the dating market. So many of you guys know far too well what it feels like to reach a point in a relationship where you finally feel comfortable to let down your guard, offer up that heart just to wonder if it's really, if they really mean it when they tell you that I love you. So when you finally say those three magical words, man, it could be really uncomfortable. Will they say it in return? Are they going to feel the same? Do they even truly mean it whenever they tell you they love you as well? Well, here to help me unravel this dating mystery is a man who knows all too well what a broken heart feels like. The man behind PissedOffParent.com, Mr. Sci-Fi himself and lover of all Voltron, my buddy Dwayne Ward. What's up? Good evening, everybody. Dwayne, boy. Can I derail us? Just, I think this will be a record if I do it just right in, in what, two and a half minutes in? Go ahead. I, I got this imagery of uh, that 80s movie Twins with Danny DeVito and oh. Arnold Schwarzenegger. You must be talking about my sweet. sweet You're looking at that's that's a very. That's, oh. that's, I can feel the flames. The Watch out, baby. Off you there. Oh, that's let me tell else. you. Something. You don't know nothing about this. Woo, boy. I got it out of Taylor the other day. Ready to rock and roll. 52 long, tight and right around the waist. I'm looking fly. At least in my own world, I am. At least in my own world. I thought I was looking at the spinning image of Danny DeVito. <laughs> I'm obviously the Arnold Schwarzenegger character in this. Yeah, right? yeah. Actually, I, I don't, I don't know which one's worse for me to look like, either Danny DeVito or maybe John Travolta, because before the yeah. show turned on, I was texting a friend, and that person said, just make sure you're not wearing a black undershirt, because then you would look like John Travolta. And I stopped and I read it because I was literally wearing a black undershirt. So I had to go and change. I put the baby blue on. I'm going to rock the baby blue today. And that's where we're at. Hey, everybody in the comments section. What's up, Jeff? What's up, Kenny? Corey, Alicia, Jeremy? You hope you guys are doing well. Uh, listen, today we are talking about the heart love. And, uh, you know, I, I got, as you know, Dwayne, I get a lot of inspiration from like some of the people that I talk to and some of the people yeah. that I coach. And so... I had a uh, fe female friend of mine who I was working with maybe a couple of years ago. She's been dating, hasn't had a whole lot of like success. And um, anyways, I guess she's dating some guy and she asked me, she shot me screenshots of what he had said to her. And, and he was asking, you know, she had said, I love you to him, but he didn't quite say it back. He said something else in return. It, it was, it wasn't I love you, but it was something more like, well, I, I adore you or, you know, it was something you know, nice. Like ghost, like ditto. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was a little oh, nicer than ditto. It, ditto. Had a, ditto. it had the sting of ditto, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, like, uh. so I completely understand why she was asking me for my advice. And she says, Hey, what do you think? And I said, I, you know, I think the guy definitely likes you. I don't know yeah. if he was necessarily ready for the exchange yeah. of those things. The L word's a big one. It's a big one, you know, yeah. and guys, um, they don't like to throw that word out there as much, you know, they, they really, really don't. So mm -hmm. I've learned that when guys do say those three magical words, they're usually not in all cases, but they're usually, you know, pretty genuine about it. But let's be real. Yeah. Sometimes people reciprocate with those words. I love you. And they don't necessarily mean that I love you. Oh, out of habit or they want to get in your pants. I don't have that problem, but maybe you do. I don't know. But yeah, I've never, you know. <laughs> Heard the I love you to get into my pants. So. <laughs> it's it's easy to get in your pants. Food and Voltron. I mean, if you just yeah. gifts and food, I mean, you pretty much just a. Um, I'm easy. You're a lay down. Even. It's it's basically a lay down, you know. <laughs> but yeah, you know, she so she was wondering, you know, does does he really love me? And 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 how her question was, how do I know? Like, if, even if he says it, how do I know? And that's been a mystery for a long time. Yeah, that's like five love languages and. People communicate love differently. Like I'm personally, I'm not a big, I love you person. Brandy, she likes to hear it. And some of that is that's, you know, she's a, a woman. I mean, ladies like to hear those words. That's, you know, that's also her love language. I, I'm a shower. 
Sorry. <laughs> My brain just went out in left field already. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I show I love you. A shower, not a grower. Is that what it is? Is that, is that where you're you going know, with it? You, you just made this go just so childish. You started it. You started it. I was never going to go there, but you just really <laughs> brought it down. Uh, had I been thinking that, that's why I was giggling. But I, I mean, it, it, everyone has like a love language. And although we also make the same mistake of trying to express our love the way we want it received, you know, it, it doesn't get received by the other person. It was a whole other episode, I'm sure. But, you know, it's hard for, I would say, guys, if they're genuine to say, I love you. It's, it's a, and especially if they've been through some garbage in their life, it's hard because they've given their heart to somebody, had it trampled. And it, it's words that don't come easy for a lot of guys and, and girls, but speaking of the guys, it's, it's a hard thing. And then guys like me, we don't say it uh, all the time. We show, I'm, I, I, <laughs> I'm a shower. I show my love. Yeah. Well, just like Jeremy said, we just hope that you are wearing pants. Okay. <laughs> Pants are optional on the show. And check this out. <laughs> Boom. Don Johnson. Todd says. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll take it. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll take it. You're not going to do the – you got to do the scrunch up. Let's see. Uh, get a little 80s there. Is that how they did it? Yeah, you got to do the scrunch, and then you got to wear the – oh, I guess those are back in style now. The uh, legs, no uh, socks, and then the loafers or whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, they like had the, the, it was the scrunchy thing. That yeah. was the big 80s uh, thing. Don I'm, Johnson. I'm, I'm just going to rock a baby blue shirt with the old uh, white jacket and my Fitbit. And that, that, that's how I'm rolling today. There you go. That's okay. how I'm rolling. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's always been kind of a mystery, you know, whenever someone says, I love you. And then you wonder if they love you back. If, are, are they genuine? And do so what it? I did, yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and they, you know, or do they truly yeah. mean it? And especially for women, right? Whenever like women really have a, a more difficult time, I think, because um, it, I, I've said this on podcasts before. Um, men and women, they both lie. Women lie, men lie. Yeah. We, we just lie differently. And yeah. what, what I always say is men lie with their words and women lie with their looks. We know that women know we, we like beauty, so they'll put on the fake hair and the fake eyelashes and the fake eyeballs and the fake Which lips and the, fake boobs and... and the bustier. I mean, there some some women are just downright robocops. I mean, they're just <laughs> all 80% just, you know, Maybelline and God, you know, so... Yeah. But you know, women women feel right. They feel uh, right. people. They feel frequency. So men will tend to lie with words, and women will tend to lie with looks. So it doesn't surprise me when I get more females asking me about this topic of, "Hey, does he really mean it when he says this?" And you know, um, it's it, they're determining whether or not someone genuinely means it when they say "I love you." It can be complex. It's hard. To just say yes, he does, or no, that he doesn't, because it depends on various factors, things like uh, you know, including the words, of course, but also actions and the oh, yeah. context of your relationship will all determine it. I would say that if you're dating and it's within two, one or two months, I don't really know mm. if you can honestly love someone, yeah. not knowing them for longer than that. I think that that's more lust or the love of who you want them to be. And sometimes, you know, as men, we have this picturesque version of this woman that we want, and women have this picturesque version of this man she wants to manifest into her life. Right. And when you find someone who checks off the majority of those boxes, in your mind, you will actually mold them into being the person that you want them to be, yeah. when not quite that person. And that's when we start to really uh, ignore red flags that mm -hmm. our friends, our family see clearly, but <laughs> we are in lust. We're like enamored. We're smitten by that person. We have this image. Yeah, because of the image. It's the person that we want them to really be, but they may not actually be that person. Right. And so we're ignoring red flags that whenever the relationship ends, we look back on it and we go, <laughs> um, was, was I drunk the entire time? Yeah. The entire time. I mean, was I drinking wine the entire time? So, you know, there's a lot that goes into saying, hey, yes, this person means it or no, they don't. And I remember, you know, over over the over the time helping people, there's a there's been a couple um stories, I guess. And I've seen it on both ways. I've seen it where a person actually did mean it when they say I love you, and right. the person wasn't sure if they meant it. And I've seen it where the person said I love you, but really didn't mean it. I got a, actually kind of a question, maybe uh, almost a sidebar, is when you say love, love is a, an interesting four-letter word. 
Uh, it's a secondhand emotion. Sorry, quoting the, the late uh, Tina Turner. But, uh, like, what do you mean by Because there's different types of love. There's, you know, I love my children. I love my spouse. Uh, you know, I love my bros. Uh, you know, I, I, I love uh, pizza. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Je Jesse loves me. I love you too, Jesse. There we go. But, and then there was, like, Actually, no homo. Yeah. And there are varying degrees of what love is. Like, you know, like I love my wife, but if she did something that would be on the no-no list that would then say that I had to leave her, I, you know, I would leave her and she'd go, well, you said you loved me. Well, th that we're, we have two, def two, def two different definitions of love then. Yeah. You know, because we have things where like, we, we love our kids, but uh, at times out of love, we have to then sometimes walk away from because of you know, drug addiction or, you know, other issues or spouses we love uh them and you know uh they do things that would make it not make sense to have a relationship you know do you is it is and again we and we've romanticized what love is i mean love always has to be this high peak i mean i'm 51 you know that worked great back in the you know when i was a kid or whatever but now you know, love is we joke about where well, i've joked a number of times love is knowing the signs of a stroke or a heart attack love <laughs> yeah. is you know, my spouse taking care of me uh, or, you know, me taking care of her. Those, you know, there's different kinds of love. It's not just the physical, oh, she's hot, he's hot. You know, we we do our thing and it's all good or we're best buddy, or whatever that is. I mean, I guess, I guess, well, you get right down to it. What When you say love, what do you mean? Or when you're talking about this topic, what do you mean by love? Yeah, and that's a really good point because you're right. You know, there uh, when it comes to love, it's very complex, but I often say this, you know, I'm not a fan of the phrase unconditional love um, because love is always oh, no under conditions yeah. um, with the exception of one, 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 one point. I think that a mother's love for her children is probably the closest to unconditional love that you can find. And I'm not, you know, knocking the dads, but, um, you yeah. know, dads will do that. Dad's job is to build good, strong qualities, morals, values, you know, discipline. So sometimes he has to pull back even when he loves his children very much to show them the discipline or, or you know, let what them is that love. And, and it's, and it's certainly I would is. argue it is. Yeah. yeah let it, letting it. my child fail or go through trials and tribulation or tribulations is a sign of love because as a dad, I, I want to, you know, come pick them up, dust them off and protect them from every evil in the world. But I know deep down that if they don't learn that lesson now, it's going to be a billion times worse when they get older. That's a hundred percent, man. And that, but I get your, your, you know, a mother's love, not to, and you're not, you know, detracting from the father's love, but I guess a mother's love is a good example yeah. you know, to, to, for discussionary purposes. I just think that it's probably the closest to unconditional. And I'm not even saying even that doesn't have its conditions, but right. you know, I just don't think there is unconditional love because most people will tell you that if my spouse cheated on me, I would leave them. Well, that's a condition. So if, if it was unconditional, yeah. then, then yeah. it shouldn't matter, right? So right. I'm not here to like, you know, uh, split hairs, but, pr but pretty much just help people understand what love really means. And to your earlier question, you know what I think love is, Dwayne? I think that love mm -hmm. is paying bills. I think love is giving each other your insulin shot when you're 70. I think love is holding hands and um, sitting next to your man when he's down and out because he lost his job. I think that love is being there for someone when someone they, they love dies. I think love is, um, you know, just going through life's challenges and being there with someone through those things. Love is not the hallmark channel. Exactly. Dodge, you know, kind of love that we all, you know, grew up thinking that it was, you know, right. love is love. Love is, is really just being there for people through the hard times because people want to see your consistency. They want to see, you know, true love is, is, is being there um, during their darkest hours. Right. And sometimes uh, true love is also letting them hit rock bottom and then helping them back up when it when they are ready to get right. themselves back up. Love has many faces and it just doesn't look like the Disney princess version of what we were taught love was. Um, but I remember a couple stories, you know, and if you guys don't mind, I'll share a couple stories. I'm going to change the names of these stories to protect the people that's in them just out of respect because I haven't asked for their permission. But I remember, you know, there was uh, this client of mine. I'm going to call her Sarah. And, you know, she lived in a small town and um, she was known for being a very attractive woman. You know, mm -hmm. she was known for her beauty, her charm, her warm personality. She had she had many men in that town that admired her. But amongst them was a man named John. 
um, who was particularly in love with her. He was really smitten. smitten. And John, John was a very charismatic, charming individual, you know, but he had this reputation for being a little bit of a playboy. He had a history of engaging in short-lived relationships, and he never seemed to really commit to any woman for far too long. But when he met Sarah, something inside of him changed, and he felt an undeniable connection to Sarah that he had never experienced with any other woman that he's ever dated. And you fast forward a, a couple months, John found himself completely enamored with her. You know, he couldn't believe that his luck, uh, you know, how lucky he was to find someone so wonderful. And he thought that he finally found the one. And he, and he would tell her that he couldn't stop thinking about her. And every moment away from her felt like an eternity. All the lovely things that, you know, women especially want to hear. And I remember there was one night that she shared with me. And she said that she was sit, that they, were, they were sitting under the stars, looking at the stars talking. So romantic. That's and, romantical. Uh, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, and, he's a, <laughs> write this down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and John decided, you know, that it was time for him to finally confess his love to Sarah. Ooh. And you know, here they were, they're sitting on this like park bench or something. And he looks at her and his heart's racing and he takes her hand. And he says, Sarah, you know, I love you more than I've ever loved anyone in my entire life. You mean the world to me, he says. Right. So, of course, she. Her, she yes, Jimmy. Yes, Jimmy. Oh, I'm I sorry. Do. I do. Right, I'm whoa, sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pump the brakes, Sarah. Pump the brakes. So, you know, Sarah hears this confession of love. And, of course, you know, she's simmering. She's in joy. She, she immediately says, I love you, John. I love you. You make me so happy. Mm. And for a while, everything really seemed like it was going well. They spent their days together. They shared laughter. They're creating beautiful memories together. And John was convinced that he finally changed his ways and found true love through Sarah. Mm -hmm. You're waiting what? for it. You're waiting to go south. Well, don't, let, don't let me keep you waiting. So, um, you know, mm -hmm. the thing about it, though, is that as the weeks turned into months, John started back with his old habits. Wow. They, they started to resurface. You know, he's, he started staying out late with his friends. He's leaving Sarah waiting. She's worried at home, wondering where he's at. You know, he kind of became distant, a little secretive about his whereabouts. And Sarah, you know, who who was still very much in love with him, you know, she she kind of began to feel like something wasn't right. Right. And uh, one night, she actually decides to confront John about his behavior, and she mm -hmm. asked him about, you know, hey, look, what's 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 up? All these recent actions you've been doing, you know, you're showing distance here. Uh -huh. And uh, John, you know, he felt a little cornered. He hesitated before confessing, but he finally said, "Sarah, I'm sorry." But I can't give you what you deserve. I thought I was in love, but I can't change who I am. I'm just not ready for a commitment. And of course, her heart sank. She realized that John's declaration yeah. of love hadn't been as sincere as it was. It was insincere. And right. although he said the words, I loved you, he said them without truly meaning it. And, if, and he was caught up in the intensity of the moment. You know, he was caught up in that being a nabber with someone that's new and 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 Hallmark just channel amazing right and what had happened is it left her hurt and heartbroken she yeah. she believed that he really loved her and she believed that he loved her deeply and in the end you know sarah decided to move on and determined and she she's now determined to find someone who can genuinely love and commit to her john although he you know had a momentarily belief um in the fact that he loved her you know he 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 continued his old ways and he's and he's still searching for someone, you know, for himself. And so although the tale is kind of bittersweet, you know, my point is, is that John's proclamation of love turned out to be empty words. And it was a momentary infatuation that, you know, he could not sustain. Sarah, on the other hand, kind of learned the importance of being cautious with matters of the heart and that true love requires more than just words. It requires a general, genuine commitment to actions. Right. So there is a story where, you know, two people really felt like they were in love, but it was more lust. He loved the right. idea. He loved how right. Sarah made him feel and it made him feel like a better man. And we have all been in situations with women where we find her and we know that this woman makes me feel like I want to conquer the world. Like I, she makes me feel like it's, life is worth living. And he felt that way with her, but it was only a moment in time. And as the time went on, you know, his his heart just wasn't as genuine.
and it's sad. Do you think, though, that, you know, he, I mean, it sounds like his history, though, is he's always been a player, um, and then, you know, he thought he could change, but he couldn't. Is that that whole people don't change? It, it certainly can be that, but I will tell you this, um, you know. Well, it goes into also is that, you know, he he said the words, she makes me feel happy, but that's like the biggest thing that is wrong. People are like, this person makes me happy. No, you need to be happy with yourself and who you are and, you know, your goals and all that, and then get someone that compliments that, My not provides it. Yeah. My general rule of thumb, and this is not going to fit one size all, of course, yeah. but, but everyone who's listening, think about this. When we were 14 years old, from when we were 14 to when we were 15, we were a completely different person. And we were a completely different person when we turned 16. And then it took to about 18 before we turned different. And then after 18, we, we became a different person maybe at like 21. And then we changed again by 25. And then we changed again by 30. My point is, is that as the years go on, the time that it takes for you to be a different person gets vast. Right. You, you, you're, you're a different person almost every year when you're younger. But as you get older, it takes a lot more time for you to become different. What's my point? My point is, is that it's going to be challenging to find true love when you're in your early 20s for a man. Now, for a woman, women mature quicker than men. Right. Men don't men don't have a biological clock that says, hey, by 35, babies. You better start spitting out babies. Right. Men can have babies until they're 75, right? So I think that um, evolution really allows men the privilege of maturing a little later. But when women are looking for long-term relationships, I would really steer them away from guys in their 20s not just because they could completely be a different person, but oh, yeah. also because a lot of times those guys cannot afford to have a family because they haven't built a career yet. Right. There's just a whole bunch of reasons why the gamble is too risky in their 20s. Right. Start looking at guys in their 30s and especially 40s. So does that mean a 40-year-old man can't change? No, but it pretty much means that he's kind of stuck in his ways, right? If, yeah. if you're 40 years old and you're still a playboy, ladies just move on by him don't yeah. take that risk i mean what is he doing grow up right i mean if you're going to be a playboy do that when you're in your early 20s as a man but by the time mm -hmm. you're 40 if you're still in that mindset it would be a high risk for a woman to think that she's going to change him and ladies i've said this you know i've said this on podcast before what's the four letter word that gets you guys every single time h o p e hope yeah. you hope he's going to change you hope he's going to come around you hope he's going to become better you hope he's going to stop drinking you hope he's going to be the man and father that you need him to be hope has cost you more heartbreak than you guys might be willing to admit and you know i'm right yeah. so it's all about risks and rewards of course but you know um watch for people's actions more than you listen to their words uh, another story that I have is a little bit different, right? So I know a story. I'm going to change the names. I'll call her Emily. I'll call him Alex. But um, the next story that I have takes place in a city instead. And, you know, Emily used to live in a city and she's always been really cautious when it comes to matters of the heart. And she had good reason for it also, because in the past, she's been in relationships where she thought the love was mutual, but only to discover that her partner's feelings were insincere. Right. Since then, she's become really skeptical of expressions of love. And I and she told me one time that there was an afternoon where um, she met this, I don't know, charming, charismatic guy, Alex, um, at a coffee shop, right? And they struck up a conversation. The conversation flowed effortlessly. They shared stories. They shared dreams, laughter. And it wasn't long before they began to start seeing each other on a regular basis. And the relationship deepened over the weeks and Alan, um, um, Alex, I'll call him Alex, Alex started to express his affection for Emily more and more. And he told her, I love you and would frequently tell her that he loved her. Well, mm. he would shower her with thoughtful gestures, oh. surprise her with flowers, mm. handwritten notes to express his feelings. But despite all that, she, she could not shake her doubts. She'd been hurt before. And her skepticism lingered, right? So uh, one evening, 
They sat on a balcony of her apartment and Alex took, Alex took Emily's hand and said, Emily, I love you more than words can express. You're the most important person in my life. And she couldn't help but hesitate. She looks back at him and she says, look, Alex, I appreciate your words and your gestures, but I've been in situations before where someone said I loved you without truly meaning it. And I just need time to be sure. So he was taken back, right? Because he generally cared for Emily. I mean, he poured his heart out and we know how hard that is for guys to do that. <laughs> and, um, you know, he felt hurt by Emily's hesitation because he wanted reciprocation, but he understood her past experiences. He understood how that it shaped her too. And he's, he decided to give her the space that she needed to kind of trust her feelings. So over the months, he, Alex continued to show Emily love, affection, without pushing her to say those words back. And he yeah. patiently stood by her side. He proved his love through consistent actions and unwavering support. He never wavered in his commitment to their relationship. And gradually what happened was Emily started to let go of her doubts and inse or insecurities. And she realized that Alex's love was genuine. She started understanding that he had been sincere from the beginning. And it was a slow process of healing and, and learning to trust again. But she was grateful for his patience and Alex's understanding that he had shown her. And one day they were walking together through a park and she turned to Alex and said with a smile, Alex, I love you. Ooh. And I see that all your feelings are real. And I'm so thankful that you're in my life. And, you know, um, he hugged her and, you know, he knew that their love had overcome doubts and uncertainties. And, you know, Emily's initial skepticism about Alex proved to be wrong. And she learned that sometimes true love can patiently wait for the scars of the past to heal and trust to be rebuilt. So there's been times, guys, where you've had both sides of the spectrum. Well, what's the difference between the two? I think the difference between the two is time. Yeah. You know, time and actions. He, the first guy said it quickly, but time showed that he wasn't sincere. The second guy, he said it quickly as well, fair, but she sat back and allowed his actions over time right. to prove that he was actually sincere. Now, was Emily, was she a, a woman of quality? She is. Okay. Shocker. I mean, shocker. You know, yeah. she did not have a high body count. She wasn't. She had no uh, OnlyFans accounts. Yeah, no OnlyFans accounts, uh, no uh, little uh, crotch goblins running around from various fathers. Uh, you know, she, so you said her apartment, so she lived by herself. She had that, you know, responsibility, taking care of her own bills, um, those different pieces there. And then, you know, he spent time. And I, I, I don't want to use the phrase hard to get because she wasn't doing it intentionally, but she sounded like she was honest. She communicated to where he understood it because it sounded like the entire time he was like, okay, I get You've been hurt in past relationships. You've uh, this. This is you're not saying no out of whatever. You're saying, uh, look, I, I I want words and actions. I want to see yeah. these. You know, I want to in order for you to feel comfortable. And then once he proved himself, and not in a negative way, in a positive way, um, then it was on like Donkey Kong at that point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, um, you know, if 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 what I say is true, if you guys believe what I say is true, whenever I say that men lie with words. Mm -hmm then ladies, let's let's think about how we can make better wins, right? Don't necessarily uh, lean on his words, but instead lean on his actions. actions. And yeah. he, through his actions, he will tell you things that words can never, never prove. It can, you know, it, it, it's just, it's just substance will be there. And right. so, so what I've done today is I've kind of jotted down some things that people can um, digest, take in that will increase the chances of knowing when someone says they love you, are they generally, do they generally mean it? Um, let's, let's jump in the comment section before I jump into here. Let's see what people have to say here. So and be sure to like, and subscribe and all that fun stuff. I guess, you know, my ex uh, <laughs> so, Todd, love has been uh, much more possessive than progressive and building each other. It's more he, he, she is mine. Yeah. Um, avoid situationships. Okay. Good, good one. No. All right. Stephanie, uh, I am new here. Hey, welcome, Stephanie. Welcome to the welcome. show. 
and she needs new friends. Well, well you got two right here. Dwayne and I will yeah. be your friends, all right? Uh, Jeremy, oh, Jeremy always dropping knowledge. I agree. Your happiness is your own responsibility. What's up, Joe? You're back, dude. Where, 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 where's Joe been? Wait, he's been dancing around. He's yeah, down here in uh, my neck of the woods, and he's been uh, keeping the uh, political and judicial uh, areas at bay and keeping, you know, exposing and talking and sharing information there to everybody and being a very active part of the community. So, you know, you know, when, when Joe says he loves a big show podcast, I don't know if I believe Joe because he's always busy. You know, he's probably, <laughs> he's probably cheating on us with other podcasts. <laughs> let's, let's just wait and see Joe's actions before we, yeah. Believe. Yeah. We see him here every weekend and we'll know he's telling the truth. <laughs> exactly. But uh, one of the ways guys, let's, let's, let's dive into how we can figure out whether or not this, these people are genuine. And one of the best ways to figure out whether or not someone is genuine when they say they love you is, is, is that they will always make time for you. They'll yeah. make time for you. And because, you know, to, to Joe's part uh, point, right? People are busy. You know, they're, we're all really, really busy, but no matter how busy people may be, they make sure that they don't neglect you and the relationship that you guys are in. Right. They make plans. They take you out on date nights. They come up with spontaneous ideas where they can be alone with you. They build 12 foot skeletons for their spouses while they're I, out. Uh... Yeah. I, I, dude, that, that, that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> where are you? How, how are you? Where, where are you going to store a 12 foot skeleton? Oh, that's the beauty part where it's not going to get stored ever. Uh, it's a, uh, it's, uh, God, my wife is nutty. Uh, just for the viewers out there, that is a the size of that. skeleton there. Um, that's my wife. There's a little, there's a little brandy there barely comes up beyond the, I guess the femur. I don't know. I don't, I don't do bones, <laughs> but, uh, uh, anyway, um, now there, there's all these Facebook groups and pages dedicated to, um, decorating them all year long. So they'll have Christmas. They'll have uh, Valentine's Day, St. Patty's Day, and they dress these skeletons up for that. But yeah, <laughs> it, it, and that's just one of those, you know, uh, surprised her with that. And then, um, and then while she was out of town at a uh, uh, thing, uh, I went ahead and put that together uh, for her. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true love. That's uh, true love. Yeah, I, I those little, it, you know, the the big things, the little things. Um, sorry, I've got off. I, I thought about the whole skeleton thing, and I'm like, that's true love, uh, because yeah, you know, I mentioned yeah, Brina. You know, she says I love you a lot. I don't say it that often. I'm I'm a. It is hard for me to break that mold because I'm old, but I don't say it enough. Um, I do say it often, but just not currently not enough. But I do it through actions. Like yeah. oh, for everyone out there that cares, the drum or the drum, the dryer is 100 fixed. All right. We don't have to hear anyone jumping on the podcast talking about a loud dryer noise that was fixed. But uh, how I show love is I I fix things. I make her life easier. I take the the brunt of issues or I shoulder responsibilities to free her up uh, to do whatever she wants to. You know, to to then that's that's one of my ways acts of service. That's one of the ways I show love uh, to her and put together twelve foot skeletons. Did you need a ladder for that? Oh yeah, oh, you know I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's twelve foot. Yeah, I'm uh, five eleven on a. Uh, no, my my uh, bones have shrunk. I'm like five ten on a good day anymore. So um, you're five ten. That means on your dating profile, you're six foot. Got it. Six five. Six, six five. five. I'm I'm uh, what am I? I'm 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 uh, physically active. Yes. I'm, uh, yes. Let's see. Lo lo loves puppies. You know, loves puppies. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, Donate your uh, time to the shelter. Yeah, all those lies and all that uh, BS and, and stuff. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> showing your partner, it, I don't know, I, I had so many, like, as you were kind of talking through some things, it, it, I thought about all this different stuff. So think about the way it was back in the 50s and 60s and, and, and earlier. The guys were like five to 10 years older. I mean, I, I remember watching older TV shows. Of course, I'm older and then older, so a lot of the younger folk are like, what are you talking about? Uh, but the older shows always had an older man and a younger woman. Well, think Beaver, the, or leave it to Beaver. Yeah. It's just I assume everyone knows that one. Uh, Ward, uh, no no relation, uh, was uh, older than um, June. I can't remember her name now. Uh, but that's the way it was because the man had to go out there, conquer the world. Yeah. And then he met his wife and then they got, you know, married and then had kids and, and life was good. 
Yeah. You know, now when men and women uh, marry younger and I'm unfortunately, I'm living proof of that when I married young, um, that you're growing in different directions and there's just so there's volatility there. Um, so it's a recipe for disaster because men, you're right. Men don't mature in that area of, for, again, generalities until later. Yeah. They're out there sowing the wild oats and doing this and wanting to party and have fun. Uh, and girls, well, and I hate I almost have to say because you look at all the data, it doesn't show that they're more responsible. Um, so <laughs> yeah. there's, I mean, but that I think it's that I think it's as time has gone on, it's it's kind of gotten you know goofy. But you know, what's wrong with you know having the guy go out conquer everything, uh, and then have you know, uh, and then meet his uh, younger, you know, five years or whatever younger spouse and. Uh, you know, carry on. I know you know, the divorce courts and the way custody is, it doesn't make sense to get married 99% of the time anyway. But what, what's wrong with that? You know, having that and, happen. And think of it this way also if you're a man and you don't have much to offer a woman, like you don't have your own place, you don't have your own money, you don't have your own car, or you know, you're just not in the situation in your life where financially you could even really date, well, if women are hypergamous and we know them to be, they then are. what is going to be the only tactic that men of that age uses on women to get them attracted to them? Chivalry. That's what they're going to use. They're going yeah. to uh, they're going to lie and express the words of adoration. They're going to talk, they're, they're going to hit your hit you in your fields because mm -hmm. they they have nothing else to offer you. So of course they're going to try to you know use manipulation of the heart. To, Black and uh, white photo on Tinder. I mean, yeah. work for me. A pattern disrupt, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I call it what it is, but, you know, men uh, still thought of as the, as the breadwinner and women are hypergamous. There's, there's, I mean, there's no denying that. that yeah. it's, it's in the DNA. And they're going to monkey branch if they're not getting those needs met. So men have to have an empire at least started. And yeah. You just go to the guys. If you don't have like your own place or you don't have your stuff together, why are you trying to create something with somebody else? Get your crap together yeah. and get it all figured out. Get happy. Get it solid in your own place. I mean, you know, on on the intro to the show is find your frame or get in your frame. Yeah, get in your yeah. frame. Yeah. That's what that means. It's not a clever slogan. Get in your freaking frame, meaning confidence. You you got your world together. Not and on somebody else and then you find a woman that compliments you what you already have that's the way it's supposed to be anything else you end up messing it up so so some of the other things that you would want to kind of pay attention to to make sure that the person that's telling you that they love you is genuine or, or what their words are genuine is is really look for consistency as well pay attention to whether or not their words and actions align over time just like yes. the stories right how the, the two stories so see if they're consistent. Someone who loves you will consistently show affection, care, support, not just in moments of, of convenience whenever they want something from you. Right. So look for the consistency. Another way is that you trust them. Your trust is one way for you to know if they're genuine. Time and time again, this person has proved to you that they can be trusted with anything that you give them. Uh, um, tasks secrets, whatever the case may be, whether it's a small chore that you need done or a deep, dark secret that you want to have kept, they always show you that they're trustworthy. Another one that you can tell if whether or not they're genuine is that their actions speak louder than the words they say. Yeah. That's a big one. Love is often demonstrated through actions, actions like spending quality time together being there during difficult times in your life, like we talked about when we said, hey, what is true love? It's being there, you know, taking you to the doctors and being there for you at your lowest point. So mm -hmm. their actions have to align. So if they're there for you during difficult times, if they're making sacrifices for each other, like look for concrete ways in which they show their love just beyond the, the words of saying it. And another way too is, and women are much better at this than men, is make sure that you guys have this emotional connection. Yeah. Women have a very good emotional intelligence, so they can kind of 
you know, they, they can feel whether or not that man loves them sometimes. Gauge the depth of your emotional connection with the person that you're with. Do they listen to you? Are they supportive of your goals and, and your, of your dreams? Do they make an effort to understand and empathize, emphasize with your feelings? Yeah. And, and also, too, a big one also is um, like consistent affection. Now, this one, ladies, um, don't weigh too heavy on this one. It's a, it's, it's a way of determining, but don't weigh this one too heavy. I would certainly look for actions, weigh that one way heavier than consistent affection because men love affection, right? They, they, they like to be touchy, kissy. And right. if a man's not really in love with you and he's just in love with what you can give him, we know what I'm talking about, right. then there's going to be affection there. So, I, but, but you guys know the difference between animal affection and true love affection. Right. Look for the constant displays of affection, like hugs and kisses and cuddling, you know, and those things can be like really good indicators of love. And, and of course, yeah. affection. And another one too is, um, you know, are they commuting, communicating properly? You know, um, <laughs> does that person allow you to voice your concerns and they don't just dismiss you? Right. Instead, they listen to you and they communicate their own feelings and thoughts. It's not just one-sided. And more importantly, they, 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 they do this and they, whenever you argue, like if you guys get into like a verbal argument, they're not arguing to win the argument when you disagree, but instead they're trying to resolve the issue by thinking of solutions, offering compromises, apologizing if it's their fault. When they love you, they don't want to lose you. And it's not a game of win or lose whenever someone truly loves you. So if they're really working on ways to try to come up with resolutions instead of another win, haha, I told you, right. that's another good reason. Open and honest communication is essential in any loving relationship. We all know that. But if they're willing to discuss both the good and the challenging aspects of your relationship and work through issues together, it's an indication of genuine commitment to the relationship. And when you have that indication of genuine commitment, then you have some good, solid ground to have true love build upon it. All right, let's see. Uh, what, what about when the girls act like her? Does she decides to act crazy during the the disagreement or conversation? You think that's a love builder? I think it's a detractor, right? Because you know, guys guys have to watch their emotions and not get angry and mean and loud. Right. Well, girls have to check themselves also. They can't get too over animated, well, you know. I hear, I see all these memes and people talking about it, like you know, a, a woman needs to, or a man needs to be able to handle my crazy, and you know, I I do this, and he needs to. And I I read that, and I'm like, what planet are you from besides Uranus? I mean, it just, I would run from that woman. And and that and um, I, I don't think a lot of women understand just how no. negative that is to a man. When, 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 when women have a hard time getting men and they're, they have a hard time keeping men, they, instead of looking within themselves and saying, hey, how can I build myself up? What can I do better? Because the common denominator through the last five is me. What they'll do is they'll start pointing fingers and say, there's no good men out there anymore. Yeah. And then they'll just say, hey, I need a real man, a real man who can handle me. Well, let me, let me just be honest with ladies, okay? <laughs> You're looking at a real man right here, and there's a lot of good stand-up dudes that are real men. And trust me when I say we have no intentions on, on handling you. You're not a child. We're not okay? scared of you. We're not intimidated, not intimidated by you. Oh, my God. Intimidation. There is no intimidation from a masculine man. Nothing <sighs> intimidates me, Okay, especially not a uncooperative, boisterous, loud, opinionated woman. It's not that we are intimidated by you. We find you insufferable. So we avoid you. So if you find yourself saying to other people, I need a real man to handle me, understand that one of the things that men look for when choosing women is, does she bring me peace? And if a woman says, I need a real man to handle me, we know right there, this woman is never going to bring me peace. I'm going to have to deal with this BS all the time. Ladies, 
I'm just saying, okay, I'm just giving you, you, you know, you know, I love you. Okay. Right. This is the 34th episode of the big show. We, we ain't new. I love right. you. Okay. I'm being honest with you here. Um, sometimes my honesty is not going to be well received with people because it, it hits too close to home. But trust me when I say that I'm being truthful to you, I'm giving you this advice, even if it's hard to hear sometimes, because I want you to win. I want you to find love. I want you to be happy. Yeah. If, um, if, if a person that you're with says they love you and you wonder if they love you, another good way of knowing is if they consider you before making big decisions. What? That's crazy talk. It is unbelievable to think that. But yeah, if, if they are considering a job that might relocate them or if they're considering a major purchase of a home or something major – if they're sharing this with you and before they make the decision, then mm -hmm. you know they are thinking about you and their future. Because someone who is serious about you and your relationship will consider you in making life-changing decisions. Before making an important choice, they're going to ask you. They're going to ask you themselves how it, they're going to ask themselves how will this affect her and I or him and I. If your partner confines in you and discusses those life changing the system, the decisions, they are definitely committed. They're serious well, and they're well, more likely in love. Yeah. Well, Jimmy, I, you know, I, I go, you know, Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. There, there's that. And you're like, eh. I, but I sit down and I'm like, Hey, Jimmy, um, I'm thinking about, you know, yeah. Moving to Seattle, God forbid, but, or, and you know, this, and I'm like, what, what, you know, what do you think about that? That means I value you. Yep. I value your opinion. I am looking for a future with you. Uh, all these things that are built in there. What What is the thing that you can say, this person loves me more? I love you, the words, or the, the as just as an example, that discussion. 100%. Or we've got to figure out how we're going to be able to retire, you know, for the married folks or the ones that are, you know, serious in their relationships. i got to figure out how I'm going to be able to retire and not eat Alpo. That's a right. Dave Ramseyism that's been around forever. And I'm spending time talking to, hey, we've got to do this, this. And uh, what do you think about doing this or making – that means I value you and I, you know, I, I love if, – if I didn't love you, I wouldn't have those conversations. I'd be like, well, you're screwed. I'm going to be doing okay over here. You're on your own. Yeah, definitely. That, yeah, it's uh, – <laughs> this so, is just uh, – I get so worked up on because – People, when they're dating, they're talking about like what their favorite color is or their favorite music band, which is great when you're 12 and 13. But when you get older and, and want to have an adult relationship, people say they want to have an adult relationship. But then I hear this stuff that they don't talk about. And I'm like, what the hell are you thinking? Like you need to, when you're initially dating on that first date, you should be into I, I, well, I shouldn't even say use the word interview, but you're interviewing them. You're asking them questions that are three layered in. It's an innocuous question up top, but you're taking their answers and you're putting those in. You're like, okay, and then that takes you down the path. And then over a period of time, you're uh, seeing if their actions meet their words. Yep. And then also you're looking at if, you know, the girl in this case, you know, the girl if, if, or if the guy saying, hey, let's, let's sleep together the first night or the girl's like, let's sleep together the first night. Is she going to be high value? Is she going to be someone that you want to necessarily look at a long-term relationship with or marriage material? This old guy would say no. Opinions may differ, but I, it, dating, yeah. It, it, I, don't know. I, I get so worked up on this topic because I see relationships that fail or have all these problems. And I'm like, you're not asking the right questions. You Or you didn't ask the right questions. You're not doing it this, you know, you're not thinking through these things. You're just like willy-nilly going through life. And it just, it, it ticks me off because I want the best for people. I want, I would love for everyone to be married to, yeah. to, and have a great life and a good partner. I mean, I am, I know it doesn't never sound like, but I'm pro marriage. I'm, I'm pro relationship, not the government version of it, but I love to see couples together and happy and enjoying their life. And I see so much wasted potential uh, on both sides of yeah. uh, you know, women playing games and doing stupid stuff and ha and chasing the next greatest thing and not, you know, making the best of what they have and, and guys doing the same stupid crap back. And it's just, it's just so unnerved. I just, it bugs the hell out of me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, you know, the, the advice that we're giving is not because we are anti men or anti woman. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 we give it, we're equal opportunity, bust your balls on both sides. Right. Oh yeah. And, and we are pro marriage, you know, and, and, and the union of the marriage, maybe not the government, not uh, the get their fingers in, in that part of that marriage, but the union for, for, um, for, for sure. 
Um, check this out. We got someone all the way from Switzerland. Switzerland. So, well, Michael. Um, hey, Mike, Mike, can I ask you two questions? Number one, what is what time is it right now in Switzerland? Because uh, I know the time zone must be completely uh, crazy. And number two, does Switzerland own sweet, sweet jackets like this? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take that recording. That's becoming a meme. I'm going to make oh, that a meme. God. It's All happening. Right. We got a question. How can I see where this relationship is going if we start dating and we only express our feelings through digital messaging? Is there still hope for us? Okay, interesting. Good. So um, is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? No. Um, so, Abby, the, there's a natural progression of dating, okay? And this is the progression that I would recommend. Assuming you started on a dating site, yep. and this is what I would do, okay? You meet someone, the objective is to get them off the dating site and onto your phones. Right. Once they're on the phones, you're going to probably continue on to texting. The objective is now to get them on the phone. You need to hear their voice. You need to hear their tonality. Words are easily mistaken. We all know work emails that get taken out of context. Because, yeah, Dwayne's probably a, he's, got, he's got a whole bunch of them. Mm. You you know a lot of communication is gonna be nonverbal communication, yeah. right? So there's so much that's involved and there's tonality to, to, to conversations. You know, there's a lot that's involved there. You need to be able to feel this guy. Use your best talents, Abby. Yeah. Use your best talent and, and that is your ability as a woman to feel the frequency of the man that's talking to you. And so I would definitely get him on the phone. From the phone, the objective is not to rush to the altar, it's to see him in person. Right. And then when you see him in person and you decide, hey, this is a guy that I like, he checks off the boxes, then you want to make sure that you see him again because everyone's everyone's awesome on the first interview, Abby. Okay. You've probably interviewed people yourself and you probably talked to him on the phone. You like the candidate, you brought him in for a first interview, and then you bring him in for a second and third one, and they are completely different personality than the very first interview. So understand that's a natural progression. If he is only interested in talking over text, there may be a nice feeling that you feel because you have the good morning and good night text that feel good and warm and fuzzy. I get it. But it, that's not what you're looking for, Abby. You're looking for a relationship, and that is not going to be formed via digital messaging. Right. So if he's not willing or able to do those things, then you are pretty much just going to have a pen pal until he or you find someone different. You're going to be wasting your time way more than you're not. That's my advice. And even with the even video chatting, I mean, I, in, in the real world, I, I, I work with teams all over the world. And I, uh, we do video chats fairly often. Use, and I've been doing it for a decade now. And there are still things that I miss, you know, miss as in not, uh, I don't get from people. I mean, I get inflections and uh, a lot of those things. But seeing that person in person, uh, there's a lot that you know you don't get on a video chat even or through pictures or and especially text because as you mentioned. Uh, text uh, can be misconstrued or it's even with the emojis, you can't get the whole thing. Or if he misspells a word, like uh, thank yeah. you for your, uh, I think I remember the email I sent to the entire company I worked for. Uh, I think it was like, thank you for your uh, something. And it auto corrected to say, uh, or I'm sorry, sorry for the whatever. And it changed the word to incontinence. So <laughs> I had the president of this extremely large organization get a hold of me and tell me I made his week. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it happens. But yeah, I mean, it, there, and there should be a progression. And I don't want to say that the man or the girl, the, the woman, or but that they have to fight for you or go through all this stuff. And I know it's counterintuitive because I mean, today is an instant gratification. If I am not sleeping with you by three in the afternoon, I'm going on something else, make the swipe left, swipe right. But if you if you well if you want a long term relationship and or you know eventually marriage and all that, that's what needs to be done. Um, you start out you know not slow for the purpose of slow, but you're taught. Do you have things in interest? You know things uh, common interests and and you know everything progresses there. And then hey, let's let's get off the the dating app 
And then from there, you, uh, you know, progress to phone calls or video chats and then, hey, let's meet for coffee or wh whatever you're into. And then it progresses from there naturally. And I know that a lot of people are going to be like, oh, my God, in the, in the world of free love. Uh, but, you know, don't sleep with each other the, on the first date. I mean, unless it's electrifying and off the charts and whatever, and I got to eat some crow on it. But it, it on the first yeah encounter, I mean, it's one of those, what would you think? I know we want to do pos body positivity and everything's allowed and all that. But if, if a, and under a lot of circumstances for guys that I guess are worldly or been around, if I know I can sleep with you on the first date, mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I know I wasn't the special one. If you're looking for that kind of thing. And, and again, I'm an old guy. I don't do any of this stuff. Other people that are more successful may be like, oh, that's not how that works. This is the way it is. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. We got uh, Steve. He says, hey, just walk away. Take it from us who have explored this road for you. Learn from our mistakes. Uh, Steve, I'm sorry you're having a little challenging on the dating market, man. I can understand why you feel that way, though. And uh, Michael from Switzerland, oh, he replied, all right, check it out. So it's about 2 o'clock in the morning there. And okay. no, they don't have these jackets. They actually have nice, classy clothes. Oh. What? Oh. Michael, what? Burn. What? Come on, man. Dogging me like that. Uh, dating. Dating today is more like voluntarily going for an interrogation and asking for the 10th degree and doing so. It, it, yeah, I can see your point, man. And you know what? There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, truth to that because dating is kind of like an interview. So, you know, what about um, the girls that show up and they want to see your uh, your bank account? I mean, and I get it. There's so many for the most. It, I mean, again, I'm talking coming from a guy's perspective, so I, I follow that stuff. Is like all the girls show up and they like, I want to see your bank account. Yeah. Like that's all they care about. Yeah. Why and, is and, that? I, I, well, because women, women. I mean, I know women, why, but women get so much attention that they will start to filter their men through just the uh, tippity top of whatever. So those, the, so they're only look for guys that are six foot or taller because they are because that's so many attention. Or they're going to start saying, "I only want guys who are who are wealthy." So they think that by going straight for it. Um, they can just go ahead and find, you know, that diamond in the rough. But I'm, I'm happy that they do that because it tells me exactly who to walk away from. Well, exactly who to walk away from. To bring this all back around for the ladies that are listening. So when you do that, uh, the, the, uh, the calculator that we uh, pulled up a long time ago, it, one, I, I think if, I, if it was 1% of guys meet the criteria of the six figures, uh, six foot tall, I remember the other one. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we, we um, um, months ago we did a delusional calculator, and and what we did was we just factor in how many men in America, which is the second tallest country on the planet, are right. six foot or taller. And there's only fourteen point only fourteen point five percent of men in America are six foot or taller. So let's go ahead and round that up to fifteen percent. Well, only t about ten percent of men make six figures in America. What's ten percent of fifteen? One point five. And we haven't even factored in race, sex, how good he is in bed, how charming, nice, his fitness levels. We haven't even factored in if he's married or not. Half of those guys are married. What's half of 1.5? 0.75. So if all you did was look for a six foot or taller, six figure guy who wasn't married, you're looking at less than 1% of the guys out there. And you really honestly think that those guys are going to think put you in the wife only category when you're asking him to see his bank account right up right off the rip. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Uh, Michael says, whenever a woman asks for bank account details, ask her her body count and an actual STD check result. She thinks that's indecent. Well, then too bad. So sad. Fair enough, dude. Fair enough. Actually, so, we want to take a second here. I, I pulled up the uh, the delusional character thing just be, in case someone's going, oh, Jimmy, you're full of it. You're just doing your whatever. Let's uh, we sh show this thing off here real quick. So what he's pulling up, guys, he's pulling up the delusional calculator, and um, and what this does is this actually will you 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 click in your your statistics, right? So he he can't be married, obviously. Ideally, he can he can, he can be any race. He can be Middle Eastern. He can be Asian. He can be white, black. He has to be at least six foot tall. He can be any weight. So this he he can be obese. I got a shot. So. <laughs> And then he has to make at least a hundred grand a year. So all we did was we factored in he can't be married. He has to be six foot. He has to make a hundred grand a year. But this guy could be morbidly obese. He could be a, a, a race that you don't want. He may not even like women. He might be. He might like dudes. Um, he may be a 
unfunny, uncharismatic guy. But if just those three things alone, Dwayne, if you could scroll down and show him what it is, the probability of finding that guy is around 0.66 of 1%. So you're, 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 you're a four out of five on a delusional score of a, an, and what are you, a cat enthusiast? Is that what it says? Scroll down a little bit more. Uh, yeah, cat, you're, enthusiast. Cat enthusiast, yeah, you're, yeah. you're a cat enthusiast. Just go ahead and just buy a bunch of litter boxes and box the wine because if you're looking for that in a guy, you're looking at somewhere between a half and three quarters of 1% of the men out there. So there's not a lot of those guys hanging around. So I would recommend, ladies, that you're looking for something other than just height and bank accounts because guys have a whole lot more to offer than just something that they look. I got lucky when I was tall, I didn't work for my height. I'm lucky. Guys can't help it if they're tall or, or short. They can't help it. Okay. Um, look for a guy who has built himself into the kind of man that you admire, that you respect because interpersonal skills can be developed. And I would weigh those a little heavier. Um, let's, let's, let's move on and let's talk about respect and trust because those are some ways that you can find out whether or not I love yous are genuine. You know, love should always come with, of course, respect and trust. If the person respects your boundaries, if they, if they value your opinions, if they trust you, that's a positive sign that the love is genuine. Also, this is not going to come to any surprise, but how about time and effort? If they're putting both of those into the relationship, you know, someone who loves you will invest the time and energy into maintaining the relationship, even when time and energy is not all that abundant to give or when it's not easy to give. And to Dwayne's earlier point, and I'll go ahead and say it because I thought it was a great point, is they will also talk about the future. If you've had conversations about long-term goals and your partner's made it clear that they plan on being with you because your their long-term goals involve you, then ultimately you're both are going to be on the same page and it's headed in the right direction or at least the same direction, right? Yeah. Yeah. Another thing too, ladies, and this is one where you guys overlook it a lot. So I want you to not overlook this is they, they that they give as much as they receive. Are you, yeah. is it one sided? Are you the one always texting? Are you the one that's always showing of signs of affection or saying words of, of adoration? A relationship is not going to be one sided. The effort that you put in needs to be reciprocated. Your partner puts in the same time, the same effort to be with you to ensure the happiness of your relationship. If you do not feel as though you are sacri like I don't want you to feel like you're sacrificing yourself or giving more than what you're getting. I guess that's my point. I want it to be reciprocated. And then, of course, uh, having supportive behavior with the other person is important because if, if a person loves you, if they say they love you and they really do, they're going to be supportive of your personal growth and well-being. They're going to encourage you to pursue passions. They're gonna, they want you to be the best version of yourself. And, and Dwayne's pointing behind him. And the reason why he's pointing behind him, Dwayne has, um, you know, he loves the Voltron. He loves the, uh, the, the Transformers. Dwayne would have not have purchased those if it wasn't for Brandy encouraging him to do it because she understand how much that makes him happy. Dwayne is the kind of guy, Dwayne's not cheap, but he's frugal and he's not going to take a lot of money and spend it in an area. And that takes from the family that he's trying to provide for. But Brandy is so unselfish that she wants to say, hey, look, 50 bucks, 100 bucks here and there is not going to make or break our family. Go buy this if you really want it, because I know it makes you feel good. That supportive behavior shows that Brandy loves Dwayne. Yeah. Another thing, too, is find a person that makes you feel secure. I want you guys to know where you stand in the relationship and you don't feel insecure. They have to show you that they are happy in the relationship and that they feel lucky to have you. And as a result, you rarely will feel jealous and you'll start to trust them. These are they're things not, that are not playing phone games or not like, well, I'm going out with a friend or none of that nonsense. Yeah. Sorry. I had to pipe in there because yeah, the, I'm going to have to say it's mostly girls. Again, I'm talking from a guy's perspective. They play these little games and to try to make the guy jealous or insecure. Uh, if the guy's worth the salt, he's going to just walk away from you. He ain't got time to play that crap. Yeah. And you shouldn't be doing it anyway. No drama. No drama llamas. Don't play the stupid games with them. Some of the best relationships that I've – whenever I'm talking to people, some of the best relationships that I hear – often comes with people saying it just was effortless. It was an easy relationship. Exactly. 
That's what Brandy and I have. I mean, I think keep making this a big testament to Brandy and mine's relationship. I mean, I've been, again, I've been married two and a half times and I've had, you know, failed and I've seen the other side of it. So what I have with Brandy is, is awesome because I feel safe. I feel secure. Uh, I'm able to, you know, buy my toys. Uh, I don't, ha- I don't play the games that I see other people doing. She doesn't play those games with me. I mean, we, we did have some, you know, talking, discussing and, an explanation of how things are going to work because I was secure in who I was. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. If you want to, you know, be with me, we're not going to play the games. Right. And she was like, all right, sounds good. And we, you know, it went from there. I see all these other people doing this stupid crap. And it's just, it just irks me because you're wasting so much of your God given energy and talent on that nonsense. And it it's, doesn't get anywhere. One of the easiest indicators on whether or not the relationship is easy and effortless and genuine is it's so easy that I cannot believe that even myself at times overlooked it. And that is, does the person make you happy? It's just so easy, right? But how many times have all of us just overlooked it? Because, you know, and, and, and then after a while we go, this is harder than I think it should actually have to be. Yeah. I mean, how do how they make you guys feel is always an important thing to observe and note. Yep. If they make you feel safe to his point, secure to his point, content and fulfilled, then they're probably doing everything they can to make you happy. Yeah. And someone who tries hard to make their partner happy is definitely in love. So yeah. when you're if you're wondering where you stand, if you're wondering where he stands or she stands, Ask the most obvious question. Do I, am I happy? Do they make me happy? And the last one that I have, and this is one that, um, that we all, we all would teach if we were to be on the teaching side of it. And, um, and man, whenever we ignore this one, it usually comes back to sting us Mm -hmm. and that's go with your gut feeling. Yeah. Trust your intuition. If something feels off, or insincere about their expressions of the love, it's important to explore those feelings and have an open conversation with that person. Ultimately, it's essential to remember that love is a complex and multifaceted emotion and people express it differently, right? Mm -hmm. It's not always one size fits all. People are different, different beings. They express things differently. Dwayne expresses his love with acts of service, and Brandy might express hers in different ways. So if you if your if your gut is telling you something's off, then sit down and explore those feelings, have open conversations. Assessing whether or not someone truly means it when they say I love you requires time, observation, open communication within the relationship. You can't fake words. I'm sorry, hold on. Let me think about this. You can fake words, but you can't fake a vibration. You can fake words. words. Right. Like people, people can feel it. Words can be like people can lie, but you can't fake a vibration or frequency. Feel people out whenever you are in the relationship with them. What does your intuition tell you? What does your gut tell you? So those are my tips on trying to figure out whether or not someone truly loves you. And if you were to wrap it all up, it's going to take actions and time. I think that can be summarized by those two things. Dwayne, is there is there anything oh. you think I missed? I was gonna yeah, I was gonna ask about the balancing on what uh, the the love is because unfortunately I see that well, today we have this uh, society that if you don't meet my love quota a hundred percent of the time um, in the exact way I want it, then I'm out of here. And <laughs> yeah, that's uh yeah that one yeah that I mean I. It, it, well, with that, you know, Brandy enjoys laughing. And of course, I enjoy being a comedian. And that's a good compliment. I mean, if I was uh, funny and she was always serious and, and you know, just hated that, we probably wouldn't be a good fit because that's a you know, large part of our personality. Make sure your, your personalities uh, work together. Uh, but back to the, the, the love thing, people have this idea, you know, we talk about love that it's, you know, you're, you're taking me on uh, vacations all the time. You're buying me expensive things and you're doing this and you're lab. I'm hoping, I'm a, you know, but that's not what you're talking about when you talk about love. Right. People, 
they hear what they want to hear out of a conversation. They, they, they'll be like, well, the big show said, you know, love me. And I, I didn't know if I love you or not. And this is how, you know, and you're like, no, that's not it at all. Um, it, it, you know, contentment is a lot of it. Do you feel at peace when you're with your partner? Yeah. It's a contentment. It's a peace. Like you feel for women, do you feel safe and secure, uh, in your man's presence? Um, try not to choke up about it, but, um, do you feel that your man will take a bullet for you? A lot of people say it. I mean, I, I, I'm a gun guy. I love guns. Um, and I hear all these big talkers, I do this, not do that. And I've seen people just choke like, and I'm sure Jimmy, in your experience, you've probably seen the, I'm a this, I'm a that. And when the chips are down, they're gone. That's right. I've had times not to get it for, since it's a public show that I've had to prove part an aspect of that. You know, I actually had a situation uh, a while back where uh, someone had an issue. I had, I had my second amendment on me and I was ready to rock and roll. I wasn't going to run. Wasn't whatever. I was going to protect my, my, you know, my kids were there with me. Um, you need, to, I mean, you need, women need to have that because that's something that women want. They want safety and security. You need to understand if your man, he can say all day long, he's going to protect you. He's going to do this. What are his actions? What has led you up to that? You know, to where you can say comfortably, this man is going to take care of me. Yeah. You know, um, and, and vice versa. You want to know that your woman is going to be with there with you for forever and not going to leave you. Because again, as we know, 70, I'm hearing now 80% of all marriages, which is again, a God given covenant where a woman pledges to God that apparently she believes in that she will love uh, her husband till death do you part. So 80, 70, I'll just say 70 because someone's going to argue with me because that data isn't, isn't out a hundred percent yet. 70% of all I love you's and can, you know, for, for life turn into, no, I didn't mean it. It's true. I mean, that, that's, that, I mean, I know I'm the facts data guy that should be a low hanging fruit one. 70% of the time, a, a God ordained covenant where a woman pledges to her family, to God, that I am going to be with you till death do us part. 70% of the time they lie. Yeah. You know, friends, um, in closing, being in love is one of the scariest but best feelings in the world. Um, yep. No matter who you are, we all crave to be loved and we all deserve to be loved. Love is a feeling above all other feelings. When we are old, looking back on our lives, we're not going to remember the jobs we've had, mm -hmm. the things that we bought, the money we made. We will remember the places that we've went with the people that we loved. Love is the king of all things. You'll likely visit some wonderful places in this world, but even those places that you visit, they won't matter as much as the people that you were there with. There are some of you out there that, that will have visited some of the most exotic places on the earth, but you'll still cherish that simple water hole at the edge of town that you used to visit because it was there that you kissed your future wife for the first time. It was there that you told him or her that you loved him for the first time. You'll remember that special spot on the edge of town that the two of you used to visit, that tree that you and your kids would lay under and talk for hours. Mm -hmm. You see, if you don't have to spend money to fly around the world to visit those kinds of places, they were free to visit. But the people that you shared that time with made those memories powerful enough to play in your mind when you reflect back on the best times of your life. Life is, life is interesting. And one of the best things about life is love and love is powerful. Love is special. Love is forever. And in the end, it won't matter how many times your heart has been broken because one day someone will walk into your life and pick up every little piece and put it back together no matter how broken it may be. Folks, be proud of your heart because your heart's been played, stabbed, cheated, broken, and burned, but somehow it still works. 
I'd like to thank everyone on behalf of myself, Jimmy Smith, and my co-host, Dwayne, and my sweet new white jacket. We really appreciate you guys tuning in today for today's episode of The Big Show. I hope you guys have a great week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe the video. And if you guys feel that it brought you guys some sort of value, or maybe it'll bring someone else that you care about value, please share it with them. We appreciate you guys helping out for the growth of the company and the growth of the business. Guys, we are here every Sunday, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. Until next week, you guys have a great week, and we hope to see you guys soon. Take care.